hello guys and welcome back to my channel it's dolly b in today's video i'm going to be showing us how to make a scalfinator a scalfinator simply means a scarf with a fascinator design attached to it if you're new on this channel kindly subscribe tap the notification bell this will notify you whenever i post a new video please like this video post your comments if you have any questions please drop them in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe i'll see you guys in my next tutorial two yards of fabric this is satin doll face i'm using two yards to make my scaffinator i'm going to cut out my fabric using the measurement 70 inches wide 70 inches width by 30 inches length it is two yards you know two a yard is about 36 inches so multiplied by two that will give me the 70 inches part and the length I'm using is 30 inches. I'm going to pleat the front part of my base. If you don't want to pleat, it's fine. I've seen it where it is not pleated. You only pleat when you want to tie it. If you don't want to pleat the front part of your scarf at all, then reduce the length to about 18 to 20 inches. You may want to pleat the front part of your scarf, but you don't want the scarf to totally cover your head. Reduce the length to your desired measurement. Now I am marking the 30 inches part and I'm going to take my ruler. I use that to draw a straight line and I'm going to cut it out. Now I fold my fabric into two. I mean the 70 inches part. I fold it into two. I get the midpoint and I notch. I open it up. And I mark the part that I notched. The point that I notch, I'm going to place my measuring tape and I measure about 10 inches to my right and mark 10 inches to my left and I'm going to mark as well 10 inches. So from the left hand side to the right hand side, I have 20 inches. I'm going to start by folding it in. I fold it in by one inch. I hold it down with my office pins like that. I will take it to my same machine and sew just the point I marked from one point I marked to the other point I mean the 20 inches part only you will not sew the whole 70 inches part now I start forming my pleat like we make an auto ghillie base it's just the same procedure but only sew the part that I marked I'm going to make about four to six pleats for this if you want it lesser, you can. If you want it more, you can make it more. If you don't want pleats at all, if you don't want to sew down your pleats too, you can leave it like that. You will only need to pleat when you want to tie your scarf. Here yeah, I'm done sewing my pleats. As you can see, the thread should be covered. I'm going to fold in the edges of my scarf twice. I fold it in twice and I'm going to sew the left and the right edges and the bottom edge. I'm going to sew that all the way down. And having done that, I just use my iron, I just iron it out, you know, to make it very neat. As you can see guys, this is how to make a scaffinator base. I'm using the fabric I have left from the two yards and I'm going to cut out some pieces of fabric using the measurement 8 inches length by 5 inches width. 8 inches length by 5 inches width you can cut as many as possible it depends on how full you want your design to be here i cut out some pieces of my fabric using the same measurement 
seven pieces you could make yours more than if you want your design to be fuller than mine I pick my fabric that I cut out earlier, I fold it into two and I sew, I turn it inside out like this, and I take my crinoline. The crinoline I'm using is about three inches wide. Then I push my crinoline inside, I just make it a little bit narrow, I pull it like that, and I push it inside my fabric. I bring it out from the other end. I make sure I'm careful so that my quinoline does not free. I bring it out like that and I trim off the excess quinoline. I trim it off. Please don't forget to move the part that I sew to the middle. Now, if you fold it into two like this, you will see that effect. Now, I have inserted my quinoline to all the pieces and I start forming my design. I'm going to fold in the two like this. And I use my needle and thread to form gathers. Can you see what I'm doing, guys? So I just bring out my needle from there, from that end, and I pick the next one. I repeat the same procedure. I just continue. I continue like that. I form gathers on the second one like that without cutting off the thread. So I'm just going to do that and pull my gathers. I repeat the same procedure on the third one like that, so the fourth and the fifth one it depends on how many you want to make so i am making the fifth one here i form my gathers on the fifth one like that and i pull my thread i pull it out and i'm going to attach it to the very first one we started with I attach the fifth one and I'm just going to end it like I just tap properly to secure it. You will notice that out of the seven pieces I cut out from the beginning, I have two left. For the remaining two I have, I'm just going to form the same loop like an half bow. I'm going to fold it like that and I'll gather it and sew. If you want to have more design if you want it fuller than this please cut more pieces instead of seven that i used here use more pieces you can use up to 10 12 or even 15. so what you just do is to make another set of four flowers another set of three or two then you stack them up on each other so now i have the two left and i'm going to place it on each other like this i'm going to place it on it and tack I use my needle and thread to secure it and I move on to the next step. I just pick my crinoline, what I have left, that's the white crinoline, the one of about 7 inches. I'm going to gather up the edges, the tip of my crinoline and I will tie because it frays. So I, I'm just going to tie like that. I fold it in like that and I gather it up like i want to form a loop i gather it up like that like a bow you know and i tie a tie i folded it again from the other side i folded it in and i gather up the middle part and i tie so i tie and i'm, I'm going to tack like that and I trim off. It's just like forming a bow. I'm sorry this part wasn't showing um, clearly, but it's like forming a bow, you know. So I'm just going to tack it to my flower. I tack it to my design like that. You can create more of this bone design, you know, to make it full. You can attach feathers. You can just attach anything. You just have to be creative. You can just come up with anything to make your frame. Now, there is one more design I want to attach using my crinoline. I just um, gather up the tip like that, like we normally do, and I tie it. It's very important to do this, very, very necessary. Whenever you're working with crinoline, you just tie the tip. 
you take your needle and thread through as many times as possible so now i want to make a rose board with this after tying the tip of my crinoline i just roll it i fold it into two and i roll it look at the way i'm rolling it i put my fingers on the tip then i pleat there i pleat there just once and i roll again i just pleat and i roll it i use my needle and thread to tack so as to secure it you need to be very fast when doing this and you hold your crinoline so tight so that it it stays i just use my needle and thread there to tack it and i want to end it there so i just pick my crinoline like that hold it down like that like gathering that part up and i tack i'm just going to tack it there I trimmed off the excess crinoline and I still pick my needle and thread to secure my rose board. Now I'm going to attach my rose board to my design with my needle and thread. I tack it to it. You can make more than one rose board, probably up to three, and attach it to it like that. You can fold it in like I'm doing, or you leave it the way it is. Now to attach my flower to my scarf i just put the scarf on my head to know the point i would like my flower to stay i actually marked that point with my tailor's chalk i like it on my left hand side now i just uh, use my needle and try to tack it to my scarf and i'm done